Good day, mates, from Hobart, Tasmania. And if you were to go on Google and do a search for tourist attractions, Hobart, this is probably one of the first attractions you would see listed. This is Mawson's Huts Replica Museum. And Mawson was uh, Douglas Mawson, actually. And this is quite a historic little uh little building it's a it's an exact replica of the uh of the hut that was used on an expedition to to uh, antarctica which is just uh just over the water from where i'm standing here in beautiful hobart and i'm going to do a little bit of a walk and talk and bring you through the museum and i'll share some of the interesting things that uh that they've got on exhibit here this is a sculpture honors the Huskies that served explorers and scientists in Antarctica between 1898 and 1994. Bas Bal Balistic Standing and Al Al Alexandra on the sledge were the Australian Antarctic, were, were with the Ant Australian Antarctic Expedition based at Mawson's Hut, Cape Dennis in East Antarctica. So look at that. Look at this beautiful sculpture. That is, uh, that right there is Basilisk, ba Basilisk, B-A-S-I-L-I-S-K, Basilisk. There is the, uh, there he is. And then, uh, and then over here you've got uh, Alexandra on the sledge. So there's your, there's your Alexandra. Just kind of chilling out, I think, taking, taking a break. So we're going to go inside and uh, check this place out. And I'm going to try to do something here. I'm going to try, if I can, to uh, do this video in one shot. Hopefully I'll be able to. But here is the hut. And as I understand it, this is an exact replica. And I'll share the, the outside with you first before doing the, uh, before doing the inside. So I'll come walk around this side here. The buildings down here in Hobart are, are quite interesting. It, it really is a uh, really is a nice uh, nice city. It's made a really wonderful it's made a wonderful first impression for me. And the building is actually still there. It's still down there in uh, in Antarctica. I don't know if they have it listed on Airbnb or anything, you know. But there is the uh, there is the building. You can Google that, I'm sure. But look at that. They uh, they went down there and ended up spending uh, spending a year. The birthplace of Australia's Antarctic heritage. Look at some of these pictures here. Sir Douglas Mawson was an Australian geologist, born the 5th of May, 1882, and he lived until 1958. And uh, he was an Australian geologist, Antarct Antarctic explorer, and academic. He was the key expedition leader during the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. So look at this right here. You can see there is the there is the South Pole right there, and there are the different stations that they had. Moss and huts right down there at the at the bottom. And look at that. Look at that hut. And this I, I'm assuming would be uh Mr uh Mr. Mawson himself. So let's go on inside and uh and take a look. This happens to be just oh a stone's throw right from where I'm staying here in Hobart. But uh so it's actually quite uh, quite uh, convenient for me to come and, and share this with you. I've already paid my emission fee. And uh, you know, you come in and as I often like to do, I'll share with you some of the things like the little squishy penguin. You know, if you want to grab yourself a, a souvenir, you can grab yourself another one of these little, little penguins there. Really nice. 
And then up here, I haven't seen these. I've seen all types of koalas around Australia, but, uh, but I haven't been able to see any of these little, little husky puppies. And you can get yourself all types of different different books about the the expedition, the home of the blizzard, Sir Douglas Mawson. So there's a book right there that maybe Mark over in uh, maybe Mark over in Michigan could could read that. So we'll take a walk through. Look at some of these here. This is Moby and Wealth. Look at that. I'm sure Molly in Texas is going to enjoy seeing this. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Look at that. Now I don't know which one's which. But there's your, there's your sheep. Or your, uh, not a sheep dog. And maybe a penguin dog. There's your, there's your penguin. Right there. Well, that's the thing about where these Isn't that wonderful? Are and there's a little and baby. Spot. They just had to grab the first bit of land they came to. Okay. So let's go look at some of the rest of this, this hut here. There would be Douglas Mawson right there. And John Davis. Well, I'm assuming was the, uh, he was the merchant seaman and ship's officer. There's your, there's your departure. Very nice. This is the Macquarie Island wireless mast, the last remaining remnants of the 230 meter mast erected on Wireless Hill, Macquarie Island in January 1912. Each mass was made from three 10 meter lengths of Oregon pine, Douglas fir, strapped together by cast iron brackets, two of which were also recovered with the mass remnants. Wow. Very nice. What do we have here? This is Macquarie Island memorabilia. These three wooden pulley wheels were used to separate guide ropes on the flying fox used to transport the wireless mast and goods to the top of Wireless Hill. If I can give you another view. These are, they look like bones of some sort, teeth or something. something. Wow. Look at this. Here's a picture for you. Look at that. It kind of looks like I did walking to school back in the days on the shores of Lake Erie. <laughs> I show up to school looking like that sometime. Look at that. They're very big dogs. Wow. Big skull. There's some of the other gentlemen here. Alfred Hodgman. Edward, Edward Bage. <laughs> you know, back in the days where men were men. This guy looks like a sailor. And here's John Hunter. Well, look at some of these pictures. That's something. 
There's a guy getting a shave. I don't think they had Facebook back then. No selfies. Nothing like that. This is the flagpole of Moss and Hut. It's the upper bolt assembly. Just up here, you have the original sled used in Douglas Mawson's Australian Antarctic Expedition, 1911 to 1914. Look at that. There it is. There's your sled. That's something. I'm assuming it has a front and a back. Wow. Mm. Some more nice, nice pictures. Boy, I'm sure these folks made the made the Aussies proud. Doing the dishes. This looks like laundry day. and hot timber right there. Wonderful. Oh no, look at this. Wow. This is something. Look, they've got the they've got the bunks all laid out. JFH. I've got a brother whose initials are JFH. Isn't that something? Boy, this is nice. Actually smells pretty good in here with the wood. Now this would be uh I think this would be Mr. Mr. Mawson's accommodations right in here and look they even took a they took a little piano that, that is the something. actual piano that they took down there with them that's the actual piano look at that wow all types of wonderful memorabilia here and here would be the here would be his room and I see pictures on the wall of Looks like maybe his, his, his love. Very nice. And this gentleman here is quite the historian. You're a volunteer, aren't you? I am a volunteer. But What's your name? Scott. Scott? Hi, uh, I've Scott. spent time down in Antarctica. I work for the government body that runs the modern, Australia's modern bases. So that's, You've been there? I have, yep. yep. Pretty cold down there, isn't it? During summer, it's fine. It's it's. Yeah. You know, zero degrees or so. That's <laughs> Did you see some penguins? I saw a lot of penguins. I saw oh. a big emperor penguin rookery. The penguins are, you know, like up, up about really? here. Really? Uh, and the chicks all clustered together, and the chicks uh -huh. were big balls of fluff about that big. I'll be um, So, yeah, I had a really great time down there. If you had, uh, that, his name was Mawson? Yes, Douglas Mawson. Based upon what you know of him, if you had to describe him in one word, 
determined. One word, determined. determined. <laughs> he was determined. He was huh? very focused, yes. Okay. Was he the first person to reach the South Pole? No, he wasn't. No. no. It was happening around the same time. The world mm -hmm. just became obsessed with polar right. exploration at that mm -hmm. time. So there was a sort of, in effect, a competition, you know, um, um, Munson and yeah. uh, Scott and Shackleton and so on. So it was actually Amundsen, the Norwegian explorer, who first got mm -hmm. there. And that's but where he, Scott arrived just a month or so later. But he was the first to go to the top of the mountain, wasn't he? Uh, the Yes, yeah, so and Mawson was part of the first group to climb Mount Erebus, the yes. volcano that's down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that was a first. Wonderful. Now, as a volunteer working here, is this where you have your annual Christmas party? Do all the volunteers we, come in here we, and have a nice little Christmas party? We sometimes party? have a Christmas party in here, or we've also got a shop just next door with a little bit more room. But, oh, but we have had events in here. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. What a nice place. Well, I'm going to look around a little bit more. And, uh, wow, this really is something else. Look at this. Looks like they had just all the fixings of home. Look at the, 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 the record player. Wow. That really, look at that. Now let's see what records on the, uh, what, 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 what were they listened to back there in the day? Let's see here. That is the uh, star, Stardust. That's what they were listening to back there, Stardust. Okay. And then here is another one. Don't let your love go wrong don't <laughs> let your love go wrong that a lot of people have told me that over the years as well so even back in the day they were you know given given the same advice now look at some of this wow look at this stuff isn't that something and off in the back you have safety hooks hooks and eyes if you can see that and they didn't have any zips then, so that's why they've got no these zips. fancy catches. Mm -hmm. Zips had just been invented, but they weren't in common use then. Now, were there any women down there? No, no. No women allowed? They wouldn't dream of having women there. It was the year of the suffragettes, and women were ah. just starting to sort of demand more rights. And uh -huh. at that stage, these men thought that women couldn't possibly survive down there. But they must have gotten cold at night. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no real answer to that. Okay. But whereas these days, uh, there's a lot of women who work down there. On uh, my spell down in Antarctica, it was a woman mm -hmm. station leader, um, about a th probably a third. How long is the journey over to the? It, it can take a week. It can take two weeks. But also, Australia now has uh, long-range jets that fly and land mm -hmm. on an ice runway down there as well. So quite a lot of people get down there in four or five hours. Is there tourism down there? Is it kind of Not in this section of Antarctica. Uh -huh. There's the odd tourist ship tries mm -hmm. to get down there. It takes, again, that week tends okay. to rule it out. Everyone will go mm -hmm. from South America wow. instead. It's much shorter. Wow. Down the end here, these two bunks belong to the two who died. Uh, just here is Ninnis, who, who was a British soldier. He mm -hmm. disappeared down a crevasse with their best dogs and most of their food on, on that wow. inland traverse that Mawson and Ninnis. And this was his there. girlfriend or wife? No, that's actually him. Oh, that's him. He's, My he's apology. Gentle. His uh -huh. nickname was Cherub. Um, My apology. I saw the picture. I thought maybe it was a, a pinup or something. That's him on the ship coming uh -huh. from London to Australia with his little mascot dog. Yeah. And wow. The bunk just here, XM, that's Xavier Mertz. He was a Swiss lawyer and champion skier. And uh -huh. he, he died on the journey back from once they'd lost all their supplies. He was a dog handler. Yeah, amongst many other things. So he actually mm -hmm. died probably of either vitamin A poisoning from eating dog livers or just wow. general malnutrition. So mm -hmm. that sledging trip, it was actually only Mawson who survived. Mm hmm. Wow, oh, that's really something. Very nice. Very, very nice. And here's some of the, the sewing. Look at that old sewing machine. Now these are, uh, what are they, these? These are replicas of what Mawson made when he was out on the sledging trip. He'd lost his normal crampons for walking on the ice and mm -hmm. he was uh, safely holed up inside a snow cave waiting for the weather to improve and there wow. it was a very steep walk back down to the coast where the hut was and so he made things like these out of scraps mm -hmm. to put them over his boots and they actually got nails 
in in the sole there to mm -hmm. try and grip on the ice. Uh, wow. they, were, they were just sort of improvising to try and make do with what he had at the time. Really, something else. Yeah. Now, what were they eating down there? They had a fairly good diet. They had a lot of tinned food. Um, mm -hmm. They also had live sheep they brought on the ship on the way down, slaughtered on the way mm -hmm. down, and then froze the meat once they got here. Yeah. Uh, they baked their own bread. They took turns. Two people each day were rostered on doing the cooking on the stove here. Mm -hmm. um, so they had a pretty good diet. They also supplemented that with eating penguins and seal meat and as well. And they had doctors with them? They had two doctors with them. Mm -hmm. um, and they were fairly healthy, really. Um, once you're mm -hmm. isolated like that, new mm -hmm. bugs and diseases can't get in there. So, mm -hmm. so they were pretty And healthy. the hut was pretty warm? I wouldn't say warm. Well, no. no. The stove was kept burning all the time and they had 30 uh -huh. tons of coal. And that was the source food. of their heat? That was their sole source of heat. This was so, the sole source yep. of heat. So inside the hut, it was really probably only around about zero Celsius. Wow. Maybe a little bit warmer near the stove here. And they just had to live with that cold all and the time. And where would they bathe? How would they bathe? The, there was another roster for night watch. There was always someone on duty at night, at time, at night in case of fire. Uh -huh. That person had time to warm up a small canvas bath of water in front of the stove here and have a bit of a, a bathe. So that I was see. only every 18 days their turn would come around. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. fantastic. So there'd be a lot of body odor, there'd be a bit of pipe a, smoke. A uh, bit of a, you said a bit of a bathe, a bit of a bathe, Well, I would right? think you'd call it a luxury I mean, we, we'd bath, say, we'd say, uh, uh, We Americans would say, oh, he could take a bath, you know, a bit of, oh, a, yeah. a, bit of a bath. But yeah. you're, with you, oh. with you, it's a bit of a bathe, huh? <laughs> uh, wonderful. Really, really wonderful. All right. So look at this, folks. Isn't this great? So I, uh... I, I travel around the world and I share special places like this and there's a lot of people that will go on Google and they'll they'll yeah, search and they'll it, yeah. and they'll learn all about this and you got a collection of, of pipes. Pipes. They all, most of them smoked. They were given an issue of tobacco each week and also an issue of uh, squares of chocolate. The chocolate was not just used for eating but also used as their currency for card games. Uh -huh. So that. They would play games, yeah. and here are some of the, the books that they would read. So in the corner over there, you have the dark room, very important. Mm -hmm. Oh, the dark room was, yeah, they so would... The big camera gear. Okay. And here is the, uh, look at the camera. They actually did have a movie camera. Uh, and that, some of that footage is still preserved. It's great footage. Really? Look at that. So here's your, here's your dark room. Wonderful. Very, very nice. And then the way out is right here? That's right, yeah. Okay. So there was something just outside that I thought might be nice to share with you. Look at, look at all of this. There's a spark gap transmitter right there. This is a cutaway of the spark gap transmitter that generated the wideband signal carrying the Morse code. The transmitter was powered by 8,000 volts and 30 amperes of current to create the spark. Tap the key on the left to hear the signal. I don't know where the key is, but no. Oh, there you go. SOS. There you go. Here's the original AAE axe. This ice axe was used by a member of the 1911 to 14 Australian Antarctic Expedition and has been loaned by the De Baltzell family in Sydney who were given the item in 1920. Here can give you a better view. Got the glare coming in. There you go. Fantastic. There's your gentleman there. All right. And the spark cap transmitter. Wow. Well, there you have it, folks. There's your visit 
to Lawson's Hut's replica, replica museum. Oh, the beautiful lady working at the counter was telling me I need to look in here. Let's see what the, what what do we have? Oh, I think. Let's see what what are, what is that? Something going on. It's like the 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 aurora, the northern well the southern lights. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. That's what they would that's what they would be entertained by at night. Seeing the seeing the southern southern lights. Wow. Maybe I can give you a little bit of a better view right there. Look at that. That's what they would see at nighttime. Can you imagine going to sleep at night and seeing that out your out your window? That must have been mesmerizing. All right. Anyway, have a uh, have a great day, folks. Hope you enjoyed this visit to Mawson's Huts Replica Museum here in beautiful Hobart.